I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to another episode of VO Buzz Weekly. That's right. Are you guys ready for part two with Nancy Wilson? We are. I have an awesome question for you. Ooh, he's pulling up his sleeves. Uh, I'm one, pulling up Nancy. my sleeves, baby. <laughs> Uh-oh. We know, okay, we all know, there's a lot of coaches out there, mm-hmm. okay? Um, are there? There are. Okay, there are. <laughs> yeah, there are. <laughs> but not all of them are effective, and we know that to be true as well. What do you think makes you effective as a coach? I'm relentless. I'm passionate. I'm obsessive. And, you know, the people's... Great qualities are the flip side, so they're not so great qualities. Yeah. I'm unrelenting, and the good news is that when I attach to a student, I won't let them fail. And so I'm relentless. You and won't. I'm exa- I won't let them fail. She won't nice. let you fail. Did well, you hear that? Yeah. I can't control no, no, but certain things heavy, beyond. Yeah. I sure don't want to let them fail. Well, like you right. can only do your part of it. I mean, you can't, right. you can't yeah. force right. it, but if, if somebody's willing, you're not going to just... If it takes five times, ten times, twenty times, you're not giving up, which is huge. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, for um, for every quality, you could describe it with the good adjective and the negative adjective, right? Mm-hmm. So, which side of the prism are you going to see it through? Like, mm-hmm. you know, people in my personal life might find me neurotic and compulsive. That's why my coursework is so detailed. What about obsessive? Well, obsessive are the thoughts and compulsive are the behaviors, right? Okay, so we've all been in and up there. We'll separate those. So the obsessive thoughts are me waking up at 2 in the morning going, shoot, I didn't send him the audition. And I go over to my computer and I send it because I'm thinking about it 24-7. Yeah, yeah. So I guess the obsessive is waking up in the we middle do, of the we night. We all do that. Oh my right? god! And the compulsive is running to the computer and making sure that somebody gets their audition. Uh-huh. Oh, I, call me because I'm up at three. I'm going. I have to I get the tell. blog entry. <laughs> I have to get the. You know. So yeah. But I think when you yeah. care, you care. You're passionate about what you do. It's it's your work, but it's 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 part of your heart. It's not For just sure. a job. So. You yeah. totally get it. Makes but sense. it's like neurotic, diligent. Which side mm-hmm. of the prism are you yeah, going to look at? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. What do you think to date has been your most important life lesson? Mm. You're not done. That's good, It right? doesn't end. The yeah. lessons don't end. Is that the lesson I learned this morning, I'm not finished. Right. There's yeah. probably one I'm going to get in the car on the way home. Yeah. There's probably one I'm going to get tomorrow. Yeah. And if you stay open, you'll keep getting them. My friend Pat Fraley, mm-hmm. mentor, um, yes. practically awesome. family. Yes. Um, he's been on the show. Right? Yes. yes. And um, he once said of me that life's big stick had beaten me to tender. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Pat one. For yeah. Sure. Yes. Right? And I think that's the biggest lesson is that, you know, when life's big stick beats you, it's what you do with it, yeah. and it can either make you more tender or tougher. tougher. And it's made me tougher on myself. I've always been tough on myself, yeah. but right. um, I think it's actually made me a little bit more tender. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Yeah. Acting for advertising. Mm-hmm. What does that mean, and why do you teach it? Oh, uh, thank you for asking. Um, mm-hmm. Acting for advertising. You're welcome. <laughs> that's all that's what to do, right? <laughs> um, acting for advertising uh, refers to the library of learning modules that I have. Mm-hmm. I have. MP3s that I have people buy before particular lessons that they have with me, um, and I've titled that whole library "Acting for Advertising." Uh, and this there, is available, excuse me, on on BrainTracksAudio.com. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's good. available on BrainTracksAudio.com, and that refers to um, the coursework learning modules that are lectures that people listen to before. I coach them on a particular concept or chapter in the coursework. Yeah. Now, you don't have to be in lessons with me to buy them. They're mm-hmm. up there, but it yeah. makes a whole lot more sense if right. you're in the coursework. <laughs> sure. Because when you are in the coursework, you listen to the learning module, right? And then I'll send you the coursework chapter that goes with it, and you get mm-hmm. the exercises, and you get me working you out on the boot camp of getting them into your operating system. Yeah. Right. That also refers to videos that I sell that are in there that are not necessarily on advertising. So acting for advertising sort of deals with my um, learning modules that go with the coursework chapters that are on advertising. But there are learning modules in there for animation, breaking into audiobooks, and there are uh, three really killer learning modules right now. There will be more uh, that are video learning modules, mm-hmm. and those have just taken off, and they're yeah. really fun. Yeah. That's well, cool. and I have to brag about you for a second. Uh-oh. Uh, She's going to brag about I love, it. <laughs> you know what? When people do what they do, and are, uh, I like to brag about people. It's better I brag about you than you. No. Exactly. Um, you. But you're... Your coursework is accredited in universities and colleges. I mean, you've really done your homework. I mean, mm-hmm. this is stuff that, that should be it and could be taught in universities mm-hmm. and, and be degree-level work. Mm-hmm. So, I have taught it at UCLA. Mm-hmm. And, um, yes, it is. I have right. a plan for people. I had somebody on um, one of the blogs answer a question that said, like, um, 
you know, I heard that this is uh, difficult work with Nancy. What should I do? Is there anything I should know? And uh, one of my students, he's Swedish, actually, he said, um, basically, if you just listen and do, you'll be okay. Yeah. yeah. I got the plan. I did the hard work <laughs> yeah. on my end. Yeah. And if they'll right. just show up and do what I tell them to do, it's likely that I'll get them there in the way that I need to get them there. Mm -hmm. Don't argue with Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll be fine. Take your medicine. <laughs> well, you can take issue. You know, I learn a lot from students. No, truly, like, I had a student um, a couple of days ago where I was sort of in the rote of, okay, what's the subtext of this piece of copy? Yeah. Do, 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 you know, and I was just kind of going about my thing, and uh, she said what she thought that it was, and I was like, no, it's not that because it's this. And she said, well, no, I don't think that's what it is. Mm. And I have to stay open, right? Yeah. And she was totally right. I'd been working on that piece of copy for 10 years. Never thought about it like how she wow. pointed it out to me. I was like, ooh, I'm eating it. You're right. Wow. You're right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that so, happens. Yeah. That so does, if, yeah. If you're smart, you can... It's good probably. that you And good for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Good for you to be... There's new ideas. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. You used to be an agent. Yes. So you know what, how agents think. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think are some mistakes people make when trying to look for representation? They miss the empathy widget. Um, they're not thinking about what the agent might need or want, and they're not thinking about the agent's needs or circumstances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, again this work here is so broadly applicable to any other pursuit of any other kind of job. Or even applying to colleges. I don't know how young your audience is. I'm sure it runs the gamut, right? 18 and up, man. See, yeah, I it's mean, crazy. You're going for any interview for anything. The best thing that you can do is research the place that's interviewing you and not make it about yourself. Yeah. I mean, it's so obvious in the conversation that it's about you. Yeah. So don't make it about yourself. Do your homework. Do some research on the talent agency. See what their roster's like. Listen to their roster. I mean, I used to have bootleg copies of compilation reels of all the talent that lived on uh, rosters, and I would give them to my students, and I would send them home to memorize them mm. and come back to me. They would say, you know, I want to go um, shop for an agent. And I would say, where? And they'd say, well, everywhere. And I said, you're not going to carpet bomb Hollywood with your demo. Right, right. We're going to go through this surgically. Yeah. Let's start with this agency. I want you to listen to everybody on their roster. Well, people didn't used to have access to that. Well, they yeah. do now. They do now, yeah. And so you can listen to everybody on their roster and think about how you can be useful to them. Mm -hmm. Because agents have a spring-loaded no. They don't need anybody else. If yeah. they needed anybody else, they wouldn't be in business. So they're, if they're in business, and if you want representation from them, they probably don't need anybody else. So yeah. you have to debunk that spring-loaded no and figure out how you can be unique on their roster. Now, typically, if you've done the right branding homework, you know what's unique and evocative about your personal style. Mm -hmm. But it sure doesn't hurt to go listen through the entire library of everybody that they represent, or at least the entire library of everybody who they broadcast that they represent. Exactly. Right. And come up with why they wouldn't represent you. Mm -hmm. And then debunk that. And then debunk that. I live between this person and this person. Come up with how you could be a hybrid. I'm a oh, yeah. little bit I'm like, a hybrid. I'm a hybrid of <laughs> that this person today. and this person. Yeah. Like, I'm a little bit of this person's vocal tone and style, but a little bit this person's attitude, but much more of that person's age. And if you can refute the, you know, we're full and we have no more room at the inn thing, when you come on in, then you're actually giving them something rather than asking them for something. You're mm -hmm. giving them something that they don't have. Very interesting. Yeah, I like that's that approach. Think about it. Yeah, that's uh, it's scientific. <laughs> neurotic. Neurotic. <laughs> you know, you call exacting. it neurotic. I call it it's psychic. calculated. Calculated. It's calculated. There we go. Oh, it's a business. You know, I think that's the thing that a lot of people forget about this. It is a business. It's a business. This is not like actor schmactor classes. No. I want you to make money. I yes. want you to make the money back that you've spent on me inside a year. I want you to make mon the money back that you've spent on me, on your lessons, on your demo, on your website, on your online casting memberships. I want you to make your money back. Yeah. This is something where you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, inside a year, sometimes people do it within the first week of being out of the gate, yeah. with or without a human being taking to you. True. But it's a business, and I think that people forget that it's a business as well. Yeah. So when they're pursuing a talent agent, they're not just looking for somebody to like them and think that right. their stuff is aesthetically interesting. Yeah. They're looking to get into business with somebody. Mm -hmm. So another thing that they can do is talk about the money that they've made for themselves. Mm -hmm. Because who doesn't want to represent somebody who's hardworking enough to have made enough money for themselves? Exactly. That's a good risk. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody's a stock. Am I going to put money on that stock? Yeah. yeah. I remember our good friend Scott Rumble. Mm -hmm. said to me, if you treat your business like a hobby, it's only going to cost you money. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. If you treat it like a business, this business, the mm -hmm. voice of business, if you treat it like a business, it could pay you like no other business out yeah. there. Mm. And it's so true. I think, uh, yeah. The opportunities I, are so huge. It's massive. You know, that for you to be like, oh, 
oh no, that's I can't, you know. It's like you try buying a McDonald's lately, <laughs> you know? You're basically well, yeah. buying a job for a million dollars. Well, I think the illusion is because it's so damn much fun. Yeah. It's so much fun that that can be distracting yeah. from the fact that it's actually a business. Exactly. And if you can work both sides of your brain, right, the business side of your brain and the raw creative side of your brain, mm -hmm. and fuse those together, you can be your own hunter and gatherer, and you can be your own raw hunter creative. Hunter and gatherer. Yeah, you're like doing gathering stuff, right? Yeah. Well, gone are the days when you had to just be a pure creative and you could marry yourself up with somebody who was the hunter-gatherer of opportunities, right? right? Now it's a get-to, have-to, mm -hmm. but you get to have to be a hybrid person yourself. You are one part creative and you're one part business person. Yeah. And the more that you look at it and respect it like a business, the most fun business you'll ever yeah. be in, yeah. um, the better you'll do. Wow. If you guys don't watch this this episode like eight times in a row <laughs> and take notes, you're crazy. Yeah. That's all yeah. I gotta say, right? Well, as you know, we put out an all points bulletin, got some viewer video questions. Oh, right. And yes. so we have four questions for you. We want to play these now, and we'll see what she says. See, this is a good indicator of someone who's going to do well in the business. You put this out there. Yeah. Who's hungry? Who wants it? Exactly. Yeah. You know? Exactly. exactly. Okay, here we go. Hi, Nancy. How you doing? I'm Ed Fisher, and I have a question for you. If you're doing a spot that's going to be used strictly on the radio, and then you find out later that it's actually going to be used under a video, should you do a different kind of production? In other words, the same copy, if it's going to be used for radio only, or if it's going to be used for video, whether it be on YouTube or a TV or wherever, do you treat it differently? That's my question. Thanks, Ed. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. That's a good question. <laughs> okay, so a couple of assumptions. Uh, my first reaction is that it'd be terribly unlikely that you would get the same piece of copy um, to audition that they would use for those two very different forms of media. Exactly. Yes. The way that uh, the VO is baked into a TV spot is different. The length of it uh, could be different, and the way that it's used as the primary storyteller in media that's for radio, mm -hmm. totally different context. So I'd be surprised if that's the case, mm -hmm. but I don't think Ed would have asked that just out of the ether. That must have come up because it came up for him. Yeah. So I would say that if, um, if it is the same copy, I would bet that it's rather short, mm -hmm. sort of deducing this back up the floor chart, right? Yeah, yeah. I would, I would bet that it's rather short so that it could be tagged at the end of TV or mm -hmm. at the end of radio. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it can't be the singular storyteller throughout an entire radio spot if it's going to be clipped into media where it's narrating pictures. Mm -hmm. Right. So if it is the same piece of copy, then I would say your, uh, mm, I would say your best bet is to uh, pace it out like poetry, and that way it will sound like you're seeing the pictures as they're unfurling above your head because ultimately they will be. Mm -hmm. And if it turns out um, that they'll only use it for radio, uh, your editor back at the ad agency or wherever, we'll probably tighten your gaps. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Great. That's good. Good answer. Good, good. Okay. But wait, there's more. Yeah. <laughs> this is coming... We're going from, high tech here, people. This is, yeah. This is coming from John. Hey, VO Buzz Weekly. John Lapiano from West Palm Beach, Florida. I've been a big fan since episode one, and I gotta say, you guys rock. When I heard that I had an opportunity to get a question of mine answered by THE Nancy Wolfson, I knew I had to jump at the chance. But first, a little background. Although I'm new to voiceover, I have had a few paid jobs, but I still consider myself to be a hobbyist at this point. I'd like to carve out a career in voiceover, but I'm not sure yet exactly where I would best fit in. I've considered audiobooks, but I don't really have a recording space suited for long-form recording. I've done narration, trailers, video game, and animation characters, I've also produced my own videos in which I puppeteer, narrate, and even sing. Now, I love singing, and I really love rock and roll, but I've discovered that my voice is more suited for country, which I've grown to love. Likewise, I love doing characters and voices, but I realize that animation may not be a possibility for someone living in Florida. I want to start building a voiceover brand, so my question is, how can I figure out where I might be best suited in the world of voiceover? Thank you for your time, Nancy. And thanks again to everyone there at VO Buzz Weekly for this opportunity. And for all you watching, 
I always make time for a little buzz. And so should you. Take care. Thank you, Thank you John. John. John, that was awesome, man. Really cool, great, Very great question. Cool. Well, it was just so comprehensive. Um, it's my personal belief that a person ought to study commercial first. Mm -hmm. I just believe that that's the phonics before you learn how to read. Um, Why? Quickly. Because you One word. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Money. Yeah. Um, because, good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Money. Yeah. Because it's the easiest territory in which to start recouping your expenses. Mm -hmm. And because um, you have to get into a secondary reality where you're pretending it was your idea to say somebody else's stuff. And I think that it's easier to do that as a representative of Toyota narrating pictures of what's happening above you while you're talking on Toyota yeah. than it is to do that as, um, you know, a chicken on fire or talking... Yeah, you know, uh, coffee mug. Yeah. So yeah. I think building characters um, stands upon the scaffolding of good commercial skills. So, and not everybody's gonna agree with me on that. Um, mm -hmm. My True. coursework is designed to build it out that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I fully respect a lot of other people don't teach it that way, but that's how I teach it. So I would say commercial first, and then out of that, that's when I determine whether somebody would be best suited to next invest in, because I can't forget the fact that this is an expensive investment yeah. for people. Right. What's next for them after that? I would say either narration or animation. Right. Um, animation, sometimes I throw people animation study early because they're having a difficult time playing pretend. Mm -hmm. And um, even if they're not going to be auditioning for animation, which in many regards does want you living in Los Angeles, studying animation and studying character work can unlock people in a lot sure. of ways. So yeah. the work of studying uh, character work, um, you know, sometimes the goal isn't always the goal. Mm -hmm. um, character study can really help people unlock some blocks mm -hmm. um, back in the area of commercial work. So I would say commercial, then narration or animation, and then uh, promo after that. You know, he asked a question at the very beginning of the question about, well, I thought about audiobooks, but I'm not sure if I've got the right recording space for that. You know, I wanted to answer that part of it. I don't know if you have the attention span for that. That's yeah. what really grinds people about audiobooks. Yeah, exactly. Have, is, um, yeah. Are you a literary person? Can you sit there? You know, one of the best bits of advice um, that I think I've ever heard about audiobooks came from my friend Hilary Huber. We interviewed her in an MP3 that's in my store about breaking into audiobooks. Mm -hmm. And she, this was just Sherry, okay? Mm -hmm. She said, everybody says they want to get into audiobooks, and a lot of people say they want to get into children's audiobooks. Well, of course, because it's short, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, She's yeah. like, that market is totally glutted. She said, what I challenge anybody to do is go grab a book off your bookshelf, and if you don't have a book on your bookshelf, then audiobooks is probably not <laughs> That's for you. That's a good nice. Let me just interject that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she said, go grab a book off of your bookshelf, generally something around 350 pages, and sit down at the edge of your bed and start reading. Mm -hmm. How's it going? You want to kill yourself by page nine? Then audiobooks is not for you. Yeah. Exactly. So it's not even so much about the size and space of your booth necessarily, but the size and space of your patience. Yeah. And, you know, animation is more about, like, do you really have that comedy gene? But I think a lot of people... Um, would like to play with that, and I think a lot of people can benefit from that, but I think everybody's best suited to start with an understanding of commercial. Yeah, I agree cool. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Right with you there. Plus, I mean, they're producing commercials every day. They're not producing new shows every day. You well, know, there's more. Okay. Um, we got another one for you. Got another one. This comes Who's from... Who's this from? Charles. Miss Nancy Wolfson. Would you like to hear this voice in one of your commercials? <laughs> so I think I think that Charles wants you to cast him. Thank you for your question, well, Charles. <laughs> you know what? Here's why I might. Because it takes a certain kind of personality to put themselves out there like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's exactly. a person who's willing to play. Exactly. He's willing to be vulnerable. He's willing to put himself, he's willing to just submit a video question. Let's just start there. Yep. Um, he's willing to play. And he seems like he's a lot of fun. And he probably thinks that it's because of the sound of his voice. I mean, of course he does. He has a totally lovely voice. Mm -hmm. It's um, strong and interesting and probably more powerful than anybody else in his friend community. Right. Right. But that's right. not what's interesting to me about Charles. What's interesting to me about Charles is that Charles had the courage to ask this question. Exactly. Yeah. Did that's you hear that, incredible. Charles? Way to go, you got Charles! Guts, man. Thank you. We appreciate that. Okay, this is our last question. Okay, is from Anne. Hi, Here Anne. We go. Hi, Anne. Hi, Nancy. It's Anne Ganguza. My question for you is this: Over the past ten years, as we all know, we've had major advancements in technology, and it's completely changed the way that we communicate with one another, as well as how we perform simple everyday tasks. 
How is a voice talent of today different or similar to a voice talent from, let's say, 10 years ago? And what is it that I need to do today? What do I need to bring to the party that will make my voice and my voiceover business stand out in the crowd? Thank you. That's a great question. That's a great question. That is a fantastic question. It's almost as fantastic as Anne's hair. Anne's got great hair. I know. And Anne does have awesome hair. Anne's a good hair club. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. well, we started to address that a moment ago, right? When we were talking about this hybrid talent of today. Yes. Yeah. Right? Um, I think people who were successful were um, always one part business brain, but now it's a deal breaker. The successful talent of today recognizes how to perform, but also how to run a business mm. and how to, um, I mean, that's another aspect of what I do with people. Yes. Right? It's not just the um, breaking down of a script and learning how to perform. Right. It's not even just understanding how your brand stands out in the marketplace, but how to run your business. Because a lot of actors, um, especially the old school actors, and I mean old school from just not that old, like just about yeah. 10 years ago. Right? Well, I thought um, you were say like two years ago. Two years ago, right? <laughs> <laughs> they um, they outsourced a lot of the business aspects of their right. business. Yeah. And you give up a lot of power when you do that. And a lot of my work with people, whether um, it's about finding your own personal style and your own voice, is about empowering them. Yeah. And um, when you run your own business, um, it's even more empowering. So I think that um, things have really gotten more empowering, but with that comes the burden of more homework. So a lot of the talent that's out there today that's watching this, yeah. Um, are fully aware that they're having to track their own invoicing, mm -hmm. they're having to do their own marketing, mm -hmm. and smart marketing, mm -hmm. no more coffee mugs. Right. Um, marketing that is about the person to whom you're marketing and things that they could need or use, or just don't do it at all. Mm -hmm. Viral marketing, social media, I teach people how to monetize Twitter, I teach people how to monetize Facebook. Um, all of those things used to fall into the business bucket that was relegated to what we were calling a hunter-gatherer or an agent, yeah. mm -hmm. and now it's become a get-to, have-to. You won't be able to hobble along in this business if you don't take on some of those skills and tasks. Yeah. And I am excited about helping people learn how to do those things. Yeah. It's very empowering. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so if you want to stand out, mm -hmm. that's the key right there. It's not just learning how to read copy. It's learning how to yeah. run a business. E and exactly. you know, the first responsibility of any business is to return profit to shareholders, right? Yeah. You're your own shareholder. Yes. So, Hello? Yeah. Return so, some profits. Yeah. We've got a, um, it's a lot of fun and games to play the talking green apple, and that's mm -hmm. cute and all, and it's good at parties, but if that apple's not making you money, it's not an apple I want. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, Very love good. It. Love it. So tell us, current projects, what's coming up for you? What can we look forward to seeing? This year, I'm releasing a new video, Hit the VO Bullseye. If you can ask yourself smart questions before you start making noise, you'll hit it in fewer takes. This graph is cherry. I have a magic graph, and uh, it's coming out this month, I believe. Well, this month or next month. Okay. Uh, depends how many midnight hours I still have left. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Over. <laughs> But I'm working on uh, editing that right now, and it's really excellent. It's about uh, helping talent um, eyeball a piece of copy and address the energy issue in one quick snap. Nice. So, um, so important. It's a word that directors overuse, mm -hmm. and they could mean a hundred different things behind that word, yeah. more energy. Mm -hmm. And it helps talent be more articulate when they're asking a director, what do you mean? Right. Faster, louder, happier, make it more important to you, make it more urgent to myself. Yeah, because right? you have to make that switch on a right. time. You don't yeah. have Energy time. could be yeah. kinetic, louder, mm -hmm. or it could be emotional. And so I have a graph that I um, teach to people, and it's been one of my coursework chapters for about mm, five years. Almost got it finished, but it will be for release this year. And nice. I'm really excited Great. about it. Great. That's cool. I can't wait to see that. Braintracksaudio.com. Yeah, it's yeah. a one-shot. Cool, cool. Very nice. Love that. I think we got a little surprise okay, for Nancy. Nancy, you've seen our show. We're going to put you on a You're spot a good over sport. here. Um, Not just a spotlight. <laughs> Pick a number between 6 and 127. 27. Can I just tell you? Gray Delio picked 27. That's her favorite number. Really? And you guys are in this month. Something about this month of January. Woo! It's going to be a good oh, year, man. sister. Better. Okay. It's because I've read the book. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she knows she every question. She hasn't memorized. Uh, okay. Well, this we're going to find this out. This is the second. perfect question for you. Yeah, yeah. Yikes. Okay. If you suddenly found the courage to do one thing you have always been afraid of doing, what would you want it to be? Like, leave the house? 
<laughs> I've done that today. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Take a vacation. Take a vacation. Yeah, really? I'm a bit of a workaholic. Wow. Yeah. When was the last time you had a proper vacation? What do you call proper? Like you, like you booked out. You didn't. You didn't. It wasn't bring a, going to. It wasn't a seminar you were giving. It wasn't not anything work related. Like, yeah. yeah. How long? Uh, when was the last time that you did that? Do you have a year? She can't even remember. This is how long bad. was it in the two? Was it in this? This is good for you, bad for exactly. her. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's big, Nancy. I, it, um, uh, ten years ago. Okay. I think it was. So I went to time. Europe for you know like sixteen minutes. Boo boo boo! I get it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice okay. architecture, good buildings. I'm done. So okay. it's, it's I got work to do. So well, it's next. <laughs> that's what's next. But when you go on vacation, do you mm -hmm. like to just completely unplug, or are you you know? Are I'm a you, stimulation junkie. Mm -hmm. I'm not a beach person. Yeah. I yeah. can't sit on a beach. I uh, um, I like to learn. I like to go and do and see. Right. And so, um, sure, anything that's stimulating, sure. I'm yeah. a city, not a beach. I'm a city okay. person. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay, well, Nancy's going go. on vacation hopefully soon. <laughs> I'll go with Absolutely. you guys. <laughs> we'll hey, you. We'll, be, well, I'll tell you what, you're going to have a good time, though. <laughs> <laughs> might even get in trouble. We might end up in jail yeah. or something like that. Uh, but, uh, I just picture you, like, busting into the airplane bathroom and, like, catching me texting or something. Uh, yeah, like, so loud. that would happen. That would totally happen. <laughs> you're like, wait, I just have to do this one post. Hold on. Exactly. One more tweet. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Love it. First of all, we'd like to thank everybody out there that turned in questions for yes. Nancy. We absolutely. appreciate thank your you. time. Thank you for having the guts to do what everybody else didn't do. Nancy, thank you, thank you. for being on VO Buzz thank Weekly. You, Such thank a you. pleasure so to amazing. have you on the thank show. You. you guys ask questions nobody asks. Thanks for watching. It was great being on the show. I hope you guys learned something. And thank you to those of you who submitted um, quite vulnerably your questions to have them answered. Um, anybody who's interested in watching what it would be like to spy in on a therapy session, you guys got it here. <laughs> Wow, was that some great information or what? Yes. That concludes part two with our friend Nancy Wilson. Be sure and tune in next week for another awesome episode of VO Buzz Weekly. And thanks again to John and Ed and Ann and Charles for submitting your questions. We really appreciate it. Keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at VO Buzz Weekly. And just remember, you guys, you, you always, always have time for a little buzz. buzz.